One of the really hot topics in the last five years in bladder cancer has been immunotherapy. We uh, often lament the lack of progress in the last 25 years. We've been using cisplatin-based combination chemotherapy uh, since the early 90s and really have had no advances since then. But 50% of patients approximately are ineligible for uh, cisplatin chemotherapy and we really have no good alternatives. Although we do see a good response rate, typically patients will fail chemo and we have no second line uh, options. Targeted therapies have revolutionized the care of most other cancers, but they've completely passed by bladder cancer and we've had very little progress. But now we are seeing major progress uh, in the care of, of bladder cancer. So what is a checkpoint and why do we want to inhibit it? For this, we need to look at the immune system and how it works in fighting cancer. The immune cell in blue at the top recognizes a tumor cell at the bottom as foreign and wants to attack it. It's dependent on other signals that will give gas and accelerate this, this reaction. Or there are, other, there are also signals that will put the brakes on the reaction. These are the checkpoint molecules. To put it in the Canadian context, it's kind of like a hockey fight. You have the immune cells attacking the foreign antigen, in which in this case is a tumor cell. The checkpoint molecule is the REF, who's getting in there to break up the fight. If you get rid of the REF, get rid of the checkpoint molecule, the fight is back on and the immune cell can clear the cancer. This is a huge field right now. It's blossoming rapidly. And there are many different drugs uh, manufactured by different companies for all sorts of different cancers. Here are some of, of those in the pipeline. So why should these drugs work in bladder cancer? Well, bladder cancer has a lot of mutations. It's one of the most mutated cancers. Mutations mean differences in proteins. Proteins are recognized as foreign by the immune system, and so it's predicted that bladder cancer should respond to these drugs. We also know that the checkpoint molecules themselves are actually found in bladder cancer, and their expression relates to how aggressive the cancer is, so it seems likely that they should work. This paper here, published in Nature in 2014, was a major breakthrough, showing for the first time that these drugs do work in bladder cancer patients. This is what we call a spaghetti plot, where you see in green and black patients whose tumors have, have shrunk and then stayed small over time. In blue, we see patients where the tumor hasn't changed. We call this stable disease, and overall would also see this as beneficial. And then approximately a third of patients um, progress despite the treatment. So this is a, a very encouraging result for this new class of drugs. In this study, the uh, investigators were able to show that the presence of the checkpoint molecule, PDL1, in the tumor tissue predicts response. If patients have PDL1, then they have about a quarter percent, a quarter of the cases will have stable disease, 43 percent will have tumor shrinkage, which is an extraordinarily high number, and together that 70 percent of patients will have a benefit from this drug. Not only is it does it work well, it's also very well tolerated. It does have 50% um, side effects of, of any kind and any grade, but most of these are quite minor. Only 4% of patients had what we would call a significant grade 3 or 4 side effect. And you can see on this slide that they're, they're not um, difficult things to, to deal with. Based on this trial, uh, the drug atezolizumab was granted breakthrough status designation by the FDA in June 2014. This trial was, was followed by another one that was published just recently on 315 patients. Uh, they'd all failed prior cisplatin or they were ineligible and they all had metastatic disease. All patients got the drug and the results were compared to what we would expect usually from a second line chemotherapy which would be 10% tumor shrinkage. The drug uh, in this phase was not quite as, as good as in the first phase trial but it did show a 42% clinical benefit. Side effects were a little bit higher this time at 16%, but still quite manageable. The drug was submitted for approval to the FDA in January of this year, and we are, are pending um, a decision of the FDA any time. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There are other drugs out there, the Merck drug, Pembrolizumab, the Pfizer drug, Avelumab. These are also in clinical development and are equally promising. And it's not just in metastatic bladder cancer. There are trials in muscle invasive bladder cancer that's non-metastatic, for example, before cystectomy and after cystectomy. There are trials in non-muscle invasive bladder cancer uh, with a couple of the drugs in, in BCG unresponsive patients. And there's a, there's a whole list of potential combinations that are exciting uh, potential uh, future uh, trials for the future.